we have a little procedure here. Uh, finding the absolute did I say absolute value? I mean absolute extrema. Either maximum or minimum. The procedure procedure has uh, three steps, basically. And it goes like this. The first step, we need to find a critical number of, uh, of the given function. Step two, we need to evaluate, but we need to evaluate uh, not only the function for the critical value, but also we may have endpoints. So at this point, we do we evaluate the function at the critical numbers and at the endpoints. Let's not forget that. Now, the endpoints may or may not be relevant, so we'll put the endpoints if applicable, because at times we may have a function such as a polynomial, and the polynomial is continuous all, over all real numbers. So in this case, the domain will be negative infinity to infinity. But a lot of time we'll have either restricted domain or um, we'll, have, we'll end up having some vertical asymptote, as it was the case with the tangent theta. And now what we'll do, we, we're going to compare and list, or list the, uh, we list the, the function uh, values obtained in step two. Okay, so this is the procedure. So we, we did it yesterday. Let's just to reinforce that, let's do one more example. <clears throat> it goes like this. <clears throat> we want to, uh, we have a f of x equals x minus 2 sine x. on uh, the closed interval 0 to 2 pi. What we'll find, we want to find the absolute extrema. So basically, we're going to follow the procedure listed above. And we're going to say the first step is let's find critical numbers. To do so, we need to find the derivative. Uh, in this case, it's fairly easy. 1 minus 2 cosine x. And we want first to uh, let it equal 0. Actually, that's the only thing that's applicable here because 1 minus 2 cosine x. The cosine x is continuous over all the real numbers. There are no vertical asymptotes. So if we look in particular at 0 to 2 pi, uh, it's, it's continuous on 0 to 2 pi. So we don't have a case where the derivative does not exist. So all we'll be interested in to see where the derivative equals 0. To do so, we'll set 1 minus 2 cosine x equals 0. And this will happen when cosine x equals 1 half. We already had this solution. X is the inverse cosine of one half. We did it in the homework problem example. So the cosine is positive on the, the right, the first and fourth quadrant, and cosine of pi over three, and cosine of five pi over three, both equal one half. So those are the critical numbers: pi over three and five pi over three. 
So we have the critical numbers. Now we are moving to step number two. We need to evaluate the uh, for function at the critical numbers as well as the endpoint. What I'll do next, I'm going to at least, I'll go by, by an order and I'll say the following, that uh, I need to evaluate f of 0, f of pi over 3, f of 5 pi over 3, and f of 2 pi. Okay, endpoint, critical number, critical number, and endpoint. I just go, uh, I'll, I'll list x in, in increasing order. So start with f of 0. Well, f of 0 will be 0 minus 2 sine of 0. So that's easy. That's 0. So we have one value. Next will be f of pi over 3. So the function is x minus 2 sine x, so it will be pi over 3 minus 2 sine of pi over 3. Now, if cosine pi over 3 equals 1 half sine of pi over 3 equals square root of 3 over 2. So we are looking at pi over 3 minus 2 times square root of 3 over 2, or pi over 3 minus square root of 3. Next, let's evaluate for 5 pi over 3. So it will be 5 pi over 3 minus 2 sine of 5 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3. Now look at 5 pi over 3. This is in quad 4. The sine is negative in quad 4. The cosine is positive there. But the sine is negative. So it will be minus 2 times the negative square root of 3 over 2. Again, those of you who don't like pi language, 5 pi over 3 is 300. 5 times 60. And sine of... of uh, 300, and you have the uh, summary of trig. Uh, if you look up the unit circle, you can see that it's negative square root of 3 over 2. So we end up having 5 pi over 3 plus square root of 3. And lastly, f of 2 pi, it will be 2 pi minus 2 sine of 2 pi but sine of 2 pi is 0, so it would be simply 2 pi. So we have four values, and we need to decide which one will give us the absolute minimum and which one will give us the absolute maximum. So what is the lowest value? Is it 0? pi over 3 minus square root of 3, 5 pi over 3 plus square root of 3, or 2 pi. What say you? Well, right, the competition will be between 0 and pi over 3 minus square root of 3. But if you recall that square root of 3 is 1.732, Pi over 3 is 3.14 divided by 3, so it's about 1.04. 1.04 minus 1.732 is a negative number, so it will be less than 0. The other are positive, so we can say quite safely that uh, the absolute minimum is f of pi over 3 equals pi over 3 minus square root of 3. Okay. What about the absolute max? We the two values that, that are in competition two pi and five pi over three plus square root of three. Two pi is six point twenty eight. Uh five pi over three hmm is 5 pi over 3 plus 1.732, is it greater than 6.28? I would say yes, because as I said, pi over 3 already, this, uh, it's, it's about 1.04. Say it's 1. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 plus 
one square root of three is five plus one point seven. So it's six point seven compared to six point two eight. So it will be f of five pi over three equals five pi over three plus square root of three. Even though you can evaluate it with the calculator, I encourage you to try to analyze it using uh, whatever information you have in your brain. This also helps you to get a little bit of number sense. Okay, so this is the example.